You are now entering the talk show world of one man that some of you may not know. You may know baseball. You may know engineering. You might even know your own wife. But you don't know Jack and what he thinks about the issues. So sit back and listen to the edgy, entertaining, and educational talk show from beautiful downtown Richmond, Virginia. Now, here's Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for being with me this morning on the Jack Bradley Show, coming to you out of Richmond, Virginia. My guest this morning is the Republican candidate for Attorney General, Mr. Mark Obenchain. He is on the road calling us for a cell phone, so bear with us. We may have a little uh, interference with those towers out there. But he is somewhere in the Winchester area this morning. Uh, uh, Senator Obenchain, welcome to the Jack Gravely Show. Jack, it's great to be with you. As somebody who grew up in Richmond, it's awesome to be on WLEE. <laughs> <so. laughs> uh, thank you very much. And uh, 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 let me say that uh, in my days with the state NAACP, I, I knew your father, had a couple of conversations with him, and we worked on an issue that I, I will remember, and it came out positively. Believe well, it or not. Well, that's great. That means a lot to me that you remember that. You know, I grew up in politics. My dad was uh, was active for years, ran for Congress, ran for Attorney General, and ran for United States Senate. And, you know, you, you introduced me as a Republican, but you know from knowing him that you know, his background was trying to win elections by building bridges, by building coalitions between Republicans, independents, and Democrats. And, you know, he never defined his friendships by political partisan lines, and I don't either. So well, that's thanks good, for remembering that. That's a good segue into my question. Uh, why are you running for Attorney General? Well, you know, it is a, uh, it's a, it's a tough, long road, and I ask myself that every once in a while <laughs> myself. But, you know, I've served in the Senate for 10 years and uh, practiced law for 26 years. And during that time, I've fought a lot of big fights. And I see right now some great challenges that lie ahead. And, you know, having grown up in the public policy world and the political arena, I have a very strong sense of an obligation to give back to our community, to give back to our commonwealth, and to give back to our country. And I've done tried to do that through my public service. And right now, we need to fight to keep our community safe for our kids. We need to make sure that we're providing opportunities and jobs uh, for our, our kids as they're graduating from high school and college and uh, keeping our economy strong. And we're going through a period of adjustment in our relationship with the federal government on things like energy and uh, health care. And these are areas in which I think I can have a pretty big impact. And uh, if uh, we can work things out, that's great. If we've got to fight, then you know, I'm pretty experienced at putting my armor on and uh, and fighting, too. Well, so when, I, I, when you look at the agenda that you just laid out as an attorney general, one could reasonably assume that you plan to be a very activist attorney general. But in, 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 in the uh, issues that you laid out, I heard nothing about protecting the consumers and the taxpayers of Virginia from fraud and mismanagement and waste of their money and other folk coming in trying to take their money and making sure that the business community follow the rules and regulations as laid out by the General Assembly. Jack, that's an important uh, part of the responsibility of the Office of the Attorney General. It is the people's lawyer. And uh, as you uh, recognize from your question, the Attorney General does have important regulatory functions uh, to exercise. He is the uh, chief uh, protector of consumers in uh, handling the consumer protection complaints, and I take those responsibilities very seriously. I think that, you know, especially when it comes to safeguarding our taxpayers' resources, uh, you're, you're right on. I mean, we uh, just passed a transportation tax bill. And uh, that's $800 million that you and I are going to be, uh, and the taxpayers of Virginia are going to be contributing to the coffers with the notion that that's going to improve our transportation system. And I want to fight to make sure that we do everything possible to get the maximum bang out of the buck for every single dollar that you and I and every one of your listeners wind up sending to the state 
in uh, tax dollars because we uh, deserve nothing less. Uh, uh, Senator Obenshane, there are a couple of questions uh, that's out on the hustings today that I have to ask you uh, uh, because if I don't, I'd be accused of throwing you a soft interview. Would you as Attorney General be in favor of strengthening the ethics laws in the Commonwealth of Virginia to include coverage from members of the First Family, members of the Senate, and members of the House of Delegates and not receiving gifts or not uh, receiving gifts over $100 that they fail to report. Are you in favor of toughening the ethics laws in the Commonwealth of Virginia in view of what's going on with our present governor? Jack, uh, short answer to your question is yes, I, I support that. And uh, elaborating a little bit on it, you know, without commenting on whether any laws have been broken, the fact that this winds up on the front page of newspapers across the Commonwealth and the subject of talk shows like yours every day yes. that we wind up, that we have a voter confidence problem. And uh, our system survives as long as the voters have confidence in the integrity of our system and the integrity of our elected officials. And, I, and if we have a confidence problem, it needs to be addressed. I have been very proactive and putting forward my proposal, which includes a $100 uh, cap on gifts to elected officials across the spectrum in government, including contributions to members of their household and immediate family. I think that we really uh, need to uh, address the uh, uh, public confidence issue. And, you know, when it comes to our Commonwealth, you know, we uh, we have a tradition that I like to think is a, a tradition of uh, having a uh, good, strong, uh, transparent government. And uh, I think that we need to, uh, anytime that we identify challenges, uh, strengthen their, our transparency. And I've got no trouble whatsoever saying I'm not going to take my gifts in excess of $100 that personally benefit me. I, I think that that's an easy uh, easy offer to make, and uh, it's going to go a long way. Plus, I think that we really need to be more proactive in making sure that people understand the uh, requirements of our transparency laws. And as Attorney General, I'm going to be engaging in aggressive uh, educational efforts in which we're going to offer uh, and make sure that everybody in the Attorney General's office, lawyers, staff, I are trained and fully understand uh, those rules, those laws, and we'd offer that kind of training across the executive and legislative branch as well. So you are in favor of a stronger ethics bill that would cover uh, the family and immediate household uh, with gifts uh, uh, of $100 or more? Yeah, I put out a news release um, earlier this week and uh, gave interviews last week in which I laid out my proposal, which does impose uh, strict limits on gift giving and gift receiving. Okay. Uh, uh, Senator Obenshane, we have to take a, a, a few minutes break. If you would hold on, we'll come right back with you. And when I come back, I want to ask you a question is, what would be your position if you are elected attorney general on restoring felons' rights in the state of Virginia, Commonwealth of Virginia? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Jack will be right back. Call into the show at 788-0990.